Welcome back, everybody. It's game time presented by State Farm here from our Atlanta studio. Brendan Haywood, the Hall of Famer, Isaiah Thomas. I'm Matt Weiner. We've got the uh, Denver Nuggets, the champs, taking on the Kings in Sacramento a little later on. We have a lot later on. Extensive pregame <clears throat> for you. In the meantime, uh, let's talk a little bit about Minnesota and Charlotte right now. First of all, Charlotte leading this game after beating Brooklyn the other night without LaMelo Ball in the lineup. And, you know, for a high usage guy like that, it's, it's always interesting to see how a team reacts when that guy's suddenly off the floor. W what do you make of the, of the Hornets with and without LaMelo? Well, more opportunities for others, right? And, you know, the more, the more they share the basketball, uh, the more you make up for, you know, what, what LaMelo brings to the table in terms of his passing, his setting up the offense, and a little bit of his scoring. But someone else gets an opportunity. Someone else gets to play. And I think Charlotte has done a good job in terms of stepping up and filling in for LaMelo. Got 28 assists at this point in the game, just uh, seven turnovers so far for Charlotte. Yeah, when you, like I said, when you look at Charlotte's team, it's kind of what Zeke talked about, guys stepping up. And when you look at the box score, they have the rookie Brandon Miller stepped up tonight, um, Bridges as well, Terry Rozier, um, P.J. Washington off the bench. So this team does have a lot of young talent. And when, when one guy's out, that opens up that, that hole. A lot of guys can go out there and get yeah. a little bit more piece of that pie. And so sometimes when a guy like LaMelo's out, the other team kind of relaxes. But the other locker room's like, Oh, oh, there's opportunity tonight. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, this guy normally gets this type of usage. He normally gets this amount of shots. Some of that's going to me. So there's somebody else on that other mm -hmm. side that's looking their chops at the opportunity, and that's what Charlotte has done. And Rozier, you know, he, he got up 27 shots the other night. Mm -hmm. So I guess he's that guy. <laughs> yeah, and, and so he's just, you know, more time for him, more touches with the basketball, and we know that when he gets in his rhythm, you know, he's a guy that can, you know, put up numbers as he did the other night. Yeah, as you look at that team right now, Brandon Miller, obviously a rookie. How far away are they from where they want to be? Contender status. It's, you know, some teams you can see, oh, they've got this young guy, this young guy. Maybe he's a year away. Maybe he's two years away from leading a team to that point. And you saw that with their opponent, Minnesota, with Anthony Edwards. Where are the Hornets in their development? You know, they're, they're still a, a couple of years away. Uh, and, you know, they've had so much change and so much turmoil that I don't think their young players have really had consistency. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't think they've had trust within themselves. And I think they're a couple of years away. Uh, another draft pick, maybe another trade, uh, maybe some more chemistry building. But they're, they're, in my opinion, they're, they're still a couple of years away. I agree. I think they're definitely a couple of years away. Um, LaMelo's a young star. When you're talking about competing for a championship, you need a superstar. Mm -hmm. yeah. Every team that competes for a championship, for the most part, has a Hall of Fame superstar type player. Yep, yep. And then they normally have either another guy that's kind of similar to that or at least on an all-star level. And right now the Hornets are trying to work to get to that. So we're going to have to see, can LaMelo make that step from young star to superstar? And then we have to see what guy on that, what young guy on that team can make the jump along with him, whether that's right. Brandon Miller, whether that's Washington. I don't know who it is. Maybe it's somebody they draft next year or the year after that and then develop. But they're going to have to figure out how they get their young talent to grow, kind of similar to what we're seeing mm -hmm. with uh, OKC. Mm -hmm. They make the trade with S they bring in SGA. Took him a couple years. He goes from young, talented player young star now he's in the superstar yeah, category yeah. and he's elevating the roster and he's bringing some of those guys along with him and they're stepping up as well so that's where hornet hornet the hornets are in the infancy stage of where okc was three years ago it's a good example because sga's first team all nba and you see oklahoma city top what four in the west right now and looking like a team that and sga looks like the mvp too mm -hmm. yes he got to be top so. five in that in that category taking on a minnesota team that has had uh, an unbelievable turnaround this year leading the western conference conference latest they've done that in what 20 years now they've won three in a row six of their last seven coming in you see what they've done particularly defensively um, which we don't see on there they're the best defensive team in the NBA right now what what has impressed you about the Timberwolves exactly what you talk about their defense mm -hmm. um, Rudy Gobert solidifying the middle right now front runner for probably defensive player of the year and they funnel everything to Rudy they run that pick and roll he stays in that drop coverage they chase over the top they make you go into the stifle tower and he's able to affect those shots and when you have a shot blocker out there to that's as good as Rudy Gobert it allows guys on the perimeter I, I like that stifle tower the stifle tower I yeah like that. I like that. listen when you have a guy like that <laughs> what it, and Zeke you know this when you're a guard you know you got that shot blocker back there 
oh, I can get a little bit more aggressive. Oh, yeah, yes. Hey, you start dribbling, I can take a, I can take a chance. I can try to reach in there because if you do beat me, you got to deal with the big fella back yeah, there. Yeah. And so when you look at how Minnesota's playing defensively, everybody's on the same page. Guys are stepping up. Their rotations are crisp. And defensively, they're showing you, hey, we, we understand this. Everybody wants to play shoot all the threes and do this, that, and the third to win. But we're holding teams to 105 points per mm. game. That's the best in the NBA, and that's why they're, they're leading the Western Conference right now. I love what Minnesota's done this season. And you know what else I, I, I like that Minnesota did is they, they went totally against the grain. When they made yes. the, the trade for Rudy, you know, they gave up a lot of draft picks, and they gave up a lot of capital to move from an offensive team to a defensive team. And it's taken them a, a couple of years to really lock in and be this juggernaut defensively that they have been. And, you know, so you got to give their management a lot of credit for, you know, really going against the grain while most, most teams in the NBA are looking to build up and stack up offensively. They said, no, we're going to become a defensive team. And they, they play, you know, they play a traditional lineup too. When you look at, you know, Gobert and you look at, you know, Towns, you know, five and a four, mm -hmm. then they got a three, they got Conley, you know, as a one. So they're, they're really a traditional and even, team. Even, and even when they come off the bench, they come off the bench with Nas Reed. Yeah, they come off yep. big. <laughs> yeah. They come off big. They've yeah. got good, skilled size. And yeah. let's be honest, eyebrows were raised when the Gobert yes. deal yes. was made, particularly yeah. because of what they gave up to bring him in. Yeah. But they were all in on the multiple bigs, and they were going to zag where everyone else was yeah. zigging around the NBA. Got a good one going in Charlotte right now. Cat knocks down the bucket there. Terry Rozier. Working over Anderson, and that gives Charlotte the lead. The Hornets hanging around there. It's 109-108. Rozier now has 23 minutes and 22 seconds to go, and we'll take you there for the uh, the finish of that one. Minnesota as a uh, as a playoff team, They're a team that can make some noise, a team that can contend for the West. Where can this team go? All of that. All of that. <laughs> um, yeah, and, you know, last year, when you look at the Minnesota and Denver series, you know, Minnesota gave them, in my opinion, really the, the toughest time. And they were right there, there with Denver. And both those teams have size. Both of them are big. And, you know, Edwards has, you know, turned into the superstar that we all thought he could be. Uh, but, you know, they, they got all the pieces. So I, I think this team can go as far as you know, health takes them. Mm. Edwards, by the way, out tonight with a hip injury, so they are battling Charlotte without their young superstar. Yeah, and I think this team can make a, a big-time run as well. Um, what I will be looking for, though, Zeke, is how do they get around what has happened to Rudy Gobert the last two or three years in the playoffs? Right. Mm -hmm. Because in the regular season, he always affects the rim. Yeah. But then the game in the playoff changes. And teams say, you know what? We're going to go small. We're either going to put you in the pick and roll at the top of the key or we're going to put you in the strong side corner. And now you negate his shot blocking because Rudy's not the type of big man where you're going to say, oh, they're going mm -hmm. small, throw it into him and, and go get 30, 40 points. He's not that. So they go small with no repercussions. They put him in the strong side corner, and now he's just out there and you're attacking the rim. Yep. That's what happened to him. That's what we've seen happen to him in Minnesota. We've definitely seen it in multiple years in Utah. So I wonder how are they going to combat that? If I'm the Minnesota coaching staff in front office, we have to figure out how do we go against the grain or how do we win playoff series when teams try to take away our biggest attribute, which is our shot blocker inside? I'll be looking to see how they do that all year long. See, I think they've done a good job, you know, management-wise and filling out their team because what you just explained is what everybody knows and every, that was the strategy. But now you got Reed, right, and then you got McDaniels. Right. I mean, so th those two guys give you the size. They still give you a little shot blocking. But on the other side, they give you offense, too. So Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because we saw Maxi Kleba and other guys take Gobert out to that corner. And, you know, whether he makes the shot or not, he's out of the paint. And yeah. see, you've opened things up. And you've coached in this league, so I can throw this question to you. If you're coaching Minnesota, you got Rudy. I'm on the other side. Mm -hmm. Rudy's blocking four or five shots. I'm like, you know what? I can't have Big Fell in the game anymore. So I put him in the strong side corner. Do you go to Nas Reed and take him out? Because that's what I want. Or yeah. do you do something different? How would you approach that? I Depending on, on the situation in the game and the time in the Florida game, I, I, would, I would use my bench. I would use Reed 
you know, to, to take advantage of whoever that player that you have out there because he's probably a weaker defender right. mm -hmm. if he's a better offensive player. But I got Reed as a, as a better offensive player. And then I, I can go small, too. I can match up with McDaniels. And they're not really small when right. they go small. No. They're still... McDaniels is long. Six, yeah, nine, they still yeah. 6'11". Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. yeah. yeah, so, I, I mean, they, they really do have all the answers to the test. Yeah. It's just a matter of if they're making shots or not. There are also ways, and Utah could never find ways to do it, but there seems like there should be ways to punish teams for going small against Gobert offensively. When he's got, he can seal a guy three feet from the rim if he's got somebody six, well, you know, yeah. six, well, eight that, guarding him. Well, that's been the problem, though. But it's never worked, right? It's never worked because if I'm in a playoff series, it's all about trying. If you're right handed, I want you to beat me left handed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so if I know you have Anthony Edwards and your counter to me going small is you're going to yeah. throw the ball and yeah. let Rudy Gobert shoot. 15, 16, 17 times, and that's no disrespect to Rudy, I would just rather you beat me with Rudy than Anthony Edwards. Yeah. And yeah. so I, I think that there's times where they can get Rudy the ball, but he's not a good enough offensive player for that ever to be a viable strategy. Yeah. That's fair. I, I'm not saying he's a go-to. I'm saying that it seems to me like there are matchups when you've got to take advantage of it. That's yeah. what they want you to do. Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh YouTube của mình. Và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc tập truyện Micro ghi âm ý nghĩ trong quyển 14 của Doraemon. Ôi, đúng là một tin vui lớn. Mình đang tỉnh hay đang mơ vậy? Trai em bị cảm nặng, khản tiếng rồi đúng không? Bởi biểu diễn ngày mai sẽ phải hoãn lại. Tất nhiên là thế rồi. Làm sao nó biểu diễn được chứ? May quá là may. Xuyên trai em đến. Ôi tiếc quá, bọn tớ đang mong được nghe cậu hát Ừ đúng vậy Ôi tiếc quá, bọn tớ đang mong được nghe cậu hát Sao các cậu ngưỡng mộ giọng ca của tớ đến thế kia Các bạn cứ yên tâm Cậu đã chuẩn bị trước cho trường hợp này Cậu đã ghi âm giọng hát vào văng rồi ư sao Ngày mai cậu sẽ biểu diễn bằng Cách bật băng và hát nhép lời Cuốn băng ấy có tới hơn 100 bài ư Các cậu vui lòng chờ đến lúc đó nhé Bọn tớ vui lòng muốn chết đây Những 100 bài hát kinh khủng Thế thể chết mất thôi Bọn mình phải nghĩ ra cách đối phó với nó Nghĩ ra rồi Sao nhanh thế Mẫu chuyện này phải gói gọn trong 6 trang giấy Không phải khẩn trương sao được Đây là micro ghi âm ý nghĩ Cậu biết hiện tượng hiển thị ý nghĩ không? Một dạng siêu năng lực giúp hiển thị trực tiếp những chữ cái và hình ảnh mình nghĩ trong đầu lên phim chứ gì? Cũng giống như vậy, chỉ cần đặt chiếc micro này lên lưỡi và nghĩ trong đầu thì những gì mình nghĩ sẽ được thu trực tiếp vào băng. Nó đang kiểm tra băng rồi đấy. Nào bọn mình hãy phá hỏng cái băng kia, bắt đầu ghi âm ý nghĩ. Cảm ơn các cậu đã đến đây đông đủ. Tớ sẽ biểu diễn hết mình. Sắp sửa rồi. Để tớ mở âm thanh hết cỡ. Ngày này qua ngày khác. Ngày nào cũng thế. Chán ngắt thế gian. Hờ. Hát thế ai chẳng ngán. Đứa nào vừa cất lời chê vai đấy. Ơ. Ờ, tớ không biết. Không không phải tớ. Tớ có biết gì đâu. Không thể tin ai hết. Được rồi. Tớ sẽ dán băng dính vào mồm các cậu. Nghệ thuật. Phải được cảm thụ một cách yên tĩnh Ôi người ơi Bài hát nhố nhăng im đi cho được việc Cái gì hát sợ mà cứ khoái hát Bị cảm lạnh mà đáng đời Câm miệng lại đi Ra là cái băng Bố láo nè Hoan hô bởi biểu diễn đã kết thúc Về nhà thôi các cậu ơi Video của mình đến đây là kết thúc Xin chào các bạn Và hẹn gặp lại các bạn ở các video tiếp theo Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh youtube của mình Và ngày hôm nay mình xin đọc cho các bạn nghe một câu chuyện Cây bút bí mật trong quyển 14 của Doraemon Cái gì? Gửi họ thư á? Cậu nghĩ bọn này là ai mà dám nhờ hả? Bức thư này tớ gửi cho Shizuka ấy mà Thư mật đấy Sao? Bí mật à? Yên tâm, bọn tớ sẽ đưa tin đến tận tay Shizuka các cậu không được đọc trộm đâu đấy. 
chỉ có đỏ điên mới không đọc để xem nó viết gì trong đó. Ớ, ờ, sao thế này? Chị làm một tờ giấy trắng à? Chắc nó quên không viết nội dung. Nobita ngu ngốc, gửi Siruka chủ nhật này. Mình đi leo núi nhé, bí mật, đừng để bọn trai em biết. Hãy trả lời, tớ gấp. Cảm ơn các cậu, các cậu đợi tớ một lát để tớ viết thư trả lời. Hey, hey. dùng cây bút đặc biệt Doraemon tặng là đảm bảo bí mật an toàn. Xong rồi, phiền các cậu chuyện cho Nobita nhé. Cậu mau đi đi. Quái lạ, vẫn là một tờ giấy trắng. Này, các cậu chơi trò gì thế? Gợi Nobita đồng ý đi leo núi. Tớ sẽ đem theo cơm hộp. Mong mong tới ngày đó. Hay quá, cô ấy đồng ý rồi. Đưa đây tớ xem nào. Lạ thật, vẫn chẳng thấy gì cả. Thế nào, Nobita, cây bút giữ bí mật của tớ thú vị chứ? Rất tiện lợi. Loại bút này khi viết ra thì chỉ có người nhận được mới đọc được thôi. Ha ha, đúng rồi. Ha ha, kinh khủng quá. Ừ, không hiểu chúng nó viết cái gì. Tức quá. Ói, sao giữa chừng lại hết mực thế này? Trời ơi, hai đứa nó đâu phải là người nhận. Chai En, Sumio, ngu ngốc, đần độn, tham lam, ăn tục, tham ăn tục uống. Và câu chuyện cây bút bí mật của mình đến đây là kết thúc. Xin chào các bạn và hẹn tất cả các bạn ở các video tiếp theo.